Hey there, Commanders. It's been a while since I've done a video on Elite Dangerous, so I thought I would poke my head in and see how things have been going thus far. This was the game that got me interested in Space Sims, and led directly to my interest in titles like Star Citizen, so I regard it fondly, even if I don't currently play very often. The Thargoid War From a narrative standpoint, the Thargoid War has flipped in the bubble's favor. In the opening weeks of this war, FDev hinted that the conflict was fully simulation-based, and that players doing nothing would result in the total destruction of the bubble, and even of Colonia. As time has progressed, it has become evident that this statement was only true in the theoretical sense, and that the simulation was weighted in favor of the defenders the entire time, with each Thargoid invasion increasing the resource load on the Thargoids, and reducing the amount of effort that defenders needed to put forward in order to resist an incursion. The decision to do this makes sense in hindsight, but it has also allowed for a certain apathy towards the war to leak in. The addition of Thargoid Spires and their related gameplay did spice things up for a while, but these sites have been quickly disabled and are now mostly irrelevant to regular players, though they are still a good opportunity for some exploration using the Odyssey suits. These are impressive structures in terms of scale and design, and a definitive positive mark on recent events, though the pace at which this mystery is being unraveled is a bit slow, and the current stakes surrounding the mystery behind the Thargoids are somewhat low. Each new mechanic of the war has creatively repackaged settlement interactions within some new Thargoid assets. Thargoid drones now roam surface spaces previously left abandoned, a gameplay change that is well appreciated from a design perspective, but one which tends to highlight the invulnerability of settlements and the overall lack of dynamic engagement at facilities which are devoid of any NPCs. The Thetis Effect in what has been a much more compelling win for storytelling, the colony ship Thetis has returned to prominence, albeit as a side plot, but one which could have galaxy-spanning implications. For those unfamiliar, the Thetis was a very early generation ship, launched before FTL drives were available, and which traveled at relativistic speeds from Sol. This ship never arrived at its destination and remains parked next to a dead world, its inhabitants having killed each other after being exposed to a cognito hazard in the form of a radio signal. Upon exposure to this hazardous signal, victims developed a homicidal dissociative psychosis that caused them to kill anyone or anything in proximity. This is one of the most open-ended mysteries among the original generation ships as the destruction of its crew was wrought by an external force that was never identified. At the time of its discovery, the hazardous effects of the message had apparently dissipated, so the copy available in the ship's logs is, or at least was, harmless. The logs available on the Thetis isolate the message to a world the vessel passed 15 years before its destruction and which was determined by the colony ship to be a dead world. Since the Thetis originated from Sol, the number of possible candidates is limited to a handful of systems, nearly all of which are among or in proximity to the old worlds. Lore-wise, this kind of threat is both unique and extremely dangerous, being unlike anything which has existed or been encountered by humanity up to this point that it has the capacity to spread like a contagion, and originates from an unknown source, only elevates the overall threat. Whether intentionally or not, the narrative team at FDev have created a villain that is, in many ways, far more dangerous than the Thargoids, and which I hope will not be created and then discarded over the course of a few community goals. In the context of Elite Dangerous, this thing, whatever it is, should be regarded as an existential and imminent threat to humanity, with significant interest from all three superpowers being dedicated to the investigation and identification of this thing, whatever it is. 
Imagine the effects of a signal being broadcast in Seoul, or Akinar, and the chaos it would unleash in the heart of a major superpower, especially seeing as there isn't an effective defense against, or treatment for, exposure to this cognitive hazard. Gameplay There is still much to comment on as it relates to how Elite Dangerous feels. I did a review of Odyssey after a year of development and was not impressed with the product overall. There were still a number of significant flaws with suit engineering, the balance of ground weapons, and interaction between ground, surface vehicles, and ships. Some of these interactions have been acknowledged by FDEV, and there have been a few tweaks to things like ground defense, but overall, Odyssey still bears many of the core flaws I've mentioned in the past, especially as it relates to suit engineering. I'm in no hurry to upgrade my suits, because Odyssey does not respect my time, and the ratio of grind to reward remains woefully lopsided. However, it's clear that ground combat remains a significant focus for development, though much of this focus is directed towards creating physical assets to explore. The Thargoid Spires are a win for ground exploration gameplay, and do not necessarily require combat if played correctly. One major sticking point remains in the clear firewall between ground and air combat interactions. Ship weapons are made artificially ineffective against ground targets across the board, something that will need to be addressed if combined arms are really a goal for the future. Player Sentiment Elite Dangerous has continued to progress in terms of technology and design, though at a painfully slow pace compared to direct competitors like Star Citizen. Elite Dangerous retains a significant advantage over Cloud Imperium in that its essential features and technology are fully deployed and stable, but this technical lead is rapidly dwindling and looks to be lost within the next two years. These two games were proposed and matured together, so it's strange to see Frontier treat this issue carelessly. Frontier continues to have one of the most toxic relationships with its player base in the entire industry, a fact that many veteran players will attest to. This sentiment has not changed, even as the game continues to advance. There is still no clear indication of the direction which Elite Dangerous is headed, no word on technical improvements or design goals, no communication regarding popular feature requests, and no word on any new ships. Aside from occasional new assets and some clever events writing, Elite Dangerous appears poised for yet another year of optimization and bug fixing with no hint of new features or technological advancements. Ground combat with Thargoids remains a common ask among regular players, but we have received no word as to whether or not this will happen. So we could be surprised, or just as easily disappointed, in the coming year. Outlook Elite Dangerous is still being actively developed and supported, though it's also not advancing at the same rate as the rest of the industry. While it's not in danger of irrelevancy in the near term, advancements in technology on the part of its direct and indirect competitors mean that the game is in an increasingly difficult position, with no indication that the developers are going to correct course. The fundamental technology powering Elite Dangerous is sound, and leaves a lot of room for improvement and rebalance. The game itself remains a top performer in the Frontier portfolio, so it's not in danger of being cut from the lineup or being dumped in the maintenance closet. At the same time, without some kind of plan for the future, it's destined for irrelevancy, though on a time scale that is still measured in years. If you're looking to buy this game, there's still some fun to be had, though I do not recommend paying its full price. The complete Odyssey pack regularly goes on sale, though, and it's worth looking into at a discount. Even if you're only interested in the ships, picking up the Odyssey module means that you can dabble with the ground game, which does have its good moments, 
even if the engineering system remains a frustrating grind. Ship-based interactions remain robust and fun at all levels, something Odyssey has not changed. If you have not had a chance to play with ships in Elite Dangerous, I can still recommend it as one of the most atmospheric experiences in all of gaming, especially if you have a VR headset or head tracking camera. Paired with an excellent flight model and navigation tools, Elite Dangerous still has something to offer in the current ecosystem of space sims. Should Frontier become willing to invest in this game's future technology and current systems, Elite Dangerous can still secure a strong position in the space sim genre. It does not need to reinvent the wheel, just fix a few flats and tune the engine. It would be great to see more aggressive development, since there are still plenty of players like myself who are willing to keep playing as long as the game keeps evolving. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.